Welcome to this uh, video. In this video, we're going to talk about loss models for uh, severity data. So severity refers to the impact of an insurance claim and the claim size, if you want, or the uh, loss that the claim uh, realizes. Now, first of all, why would you be interested in putting models together for uh, severity data? Well, think again about what we said um, when we were discussing the basics of uh, pricing in insurance. So if you look at insurance uh, pricing, we're essentially in non-life taking a frequency times uh, severity strategy. So in that case, we need um, a building a model to, to take care of modeling the data that we have on the frequency of um, uh, insured events, as well as um, putting a model together to handle the impact or the severity of uh, an insured event if it happens um, right. So in general, in risk models, uh, we care about the following type of uh, random variables. So how often does the event we're interested in happens? So that relates to frequency modeling. And if the event we're interested in happens what is the impact? So to model this impact, we're going to work with severity models. And then a typical uh, other type of random variable that we could be interested in is when uh, does the event we're interested in happens? Or um, what is the time until the event? Yeah. So these are the typical random variables we're interested in. And today we're going to focus on this second one. So think of, uh, again, if you are looking for a suitable um, distribution or a suitable, um, or a suitable model to, to handle these uh, severities, what you have to picture then is then the typical shape of severity data in an insurance uh, context. So typically, if you would plot the empirical distribution of your um, claim sizes, uh, of, of your loss uh, data, you would get a distribution that is skewed to the right and that is typically long-tailed or even heavy-tailed. So these are the empirical features that should be reflected by the distributional models, the distributional assumptions that we're going to make. And in insurance, we typically call these small to moderate losses. We call them the attritional losses or attritional loss data. And then from here on, we talk about the uh, large losses, say, or even the extreme losses, right? So when you're looking for a candidate distribution um, to handle these uh, losses, you uh, will have to take these uh, specific characteristics into account, and you will either zoom, on, zoom in on modeling the attritional losses or modeling the large or even extreme losses, or you could also go for putting together a distribution that achieves a global fit and is capable of uh, capturing both the attritional losses as well as the large losses, right? But what I want to do today is focus on the uh, presence of losses that can be either truncated or right-censored. And if truncation is happening in an insurance context, we're typically going to focus on left truncation. So first of all, let us explain what, is, uh, what these different uh, phenomena are referring to. So let us first consider what about uh, right censoring or censoring. Let's start from censoring. So when losses are censored, it means we see part of the loss, but not the full loss we don't see um, the complete loss, right? And if you think about in which uh, situations or in which examples this can be uh, relevant, well, think about, for instance, the time until death of a policyholder in a life insurance context. Well, if this policyholder is alive at the present moment, at the moment of evaluation, then 
his or her time until death is right censored in the sense that you'll know that the time of death of this particular po policyholder who is still alive is going to be larger than the value that you currently observe, but you don't know how much larger this time until death or this lifetime of the policyholder will be. So that's one typical example. Another example is in um, uh, reserving, pricing. In reserving and both pricing, when you look at the size of a claim that is currently under development, right? So the loss reported on a claim that is currently under development. So what you know then at the present moment, at the time of evaluation, is you know how much you paid up to now for this claim, but you don't know how much you will pay in the end when this claim will be finally settled. So you only know that the safe claim size is going to be larger than what you currently paid on this claim. So that's an example of right censoring as well. Then another example is in disability insurance. So in disability insurance, uh, one of the variables um, we're interested in, one of the variables we're interested in is the uh, time spent in disability. And again, if our policyholder is currently still in the state of disability, then you only know that the time spent in this disabled state is going to be larger than what you currently observed for this uh, time spent until now in disability. So that's another example where right censoring is, um, is typically occurring in your data. Right. Then on the other hand, if we look at truncation in insurance or truncated data, then that means that some of our objects or some of our subjects um, simply do not appear in our sample. So truncation is a kind of missing data, right? So that's important to distinguish it from uh, censoring. So with sensor data, we observe part of uh, the quantity that we're actually interested in, but we don't see uh, the full or the complete uh, quantity. But with truncation, we're really missing some observations or some, some objects because they simply do not get over the hurdle, over the threshold uh, to be part in our uh, sample, to be part of our sample. And that's, for instance, when you're working with an insurance contract where there is a deductible or an own risk. So that means if your policyholder files a claim and the amount of this claim stays below the deductible, then you can say that this observation is left truncated because uh, the uh, claim amount is not overshooting the own risk or the deductible. Right? Another example could be that there is a certain um, period of, of deferment in a disability insurance context. So that means that the disability insurance product will only start to, uh, to pay a certain uh, uh, allowance or a certain insured amount as soon as the time spent in disability is overshooting, is longer than the period of deferment. And that's another example of, of left truncation in insurance. Now what we're worried about is how to reflect these two phenomena in our likelihood function. So what is the impact on our likelihood function if we're facing truncated, left truncated data, and possibly uh, also right censored data? So that's something we want to uh, think about. Because, of course, if we would ignore these phenomena, if we don't carefully reflect them in our likelihood function, then the estimates of our parameters, of our distributional models, would be biased. And that's something we want to uh, avoid, right? So what are we going to do? We're going to fit a loss distribution to our available insured uh, losses. And we're going to reflect the presence of left truncation 
and right sensory. So the presence of these two phenomena. So how to do this? Well, first of all, we'll need some appropriate notation. And the notation we're going to use here is the following. We're going to denote with i the random variable of interest. So that's our response. Think about the size of a claim. Then we'll denote with c its censored value, if there is censoring being present. And what we're going to observe then is the following pieces of information. So we're going to observe this c. We're going to observe the y star, which is the minimum of y and c. Right? And we're going to observe a delta, which is an indicator that says, is our loss censored or not? So this delta is going to take a value of 1. If the y is above the censored value c, so that means that we're actually facing a loss that is right censored and is censored from above. And this, indicated, this indicator delta is going to take a value 0 if the y is below the c. So that means we do observe the complete loss and there is no censoring being present. Okay. So say that we have observed small y for the y star. Say that we have observed small c for the censored value c and a delta that is 0 or 1. So how can we put together a likelihood function for this kind of uh, information. So the contribution to the likelihood can be written as follows. Uh, we've got the density of y evaluated in y. If our observation is not censored, right? So that means we observe the complete loss y so what are we going to put into our likelihood function? Typically, for continuous data, we're going to work with the PDF um, that we want to use, that we want to fit to our uh, data. We're going to work with the PDF of y evaluated in a complete loss y. But on the other hand, if we're facing a censored, um, censored loss, the only thing we know is that our complete loss y is going to be larger than the current, currently observed loss, that's the C, right? Because now we observe the C value, the censored loss, and the only thing we know is that the eventual loss, the complete loss, will be larger than this C. So we're going to reflect this by putting into our likelihood the probability that Y is larger than C under the parametric model that we are assuming here. So our likelihood contribution is now going to be written as the survival function of y evaluated in c. So that is the contribution if we have a censored loss, so if our delta, our indicator, is equal to 1. So putting this together, you can say that the contribution to the likelihood of our observed loss uh, y can be written as the density evaluated in y if the loss is not censored, and the survival function of y evaluated in c if the loss is censored. And the way to put that together into a single expression is by using our delta indicator and by writing the expression like this, because then you see if the delta is equal to 1, we'll get this contribution to the likelihood, and if the delta is equal to 0, we'll get this contribution to the likelihood. So here we can distinguish between the losses that we fully observed and the losses for which we only observe their censored values. So that's what we want to put into our likelihood. And if we take that all together, so if we look at the uh, result, resulting likelihood function, then we'll take the product over all observations in the available sample. So we're going to assume that they are all independent from each other and identically distributed and we're going to write their contributions like this. So this should be 1 minus delta, of course. Now you can work with this expression 
and you could say, okay, um, I can put all the complete observations together and write the likelihood contribution like this. And I can put all the censored losses together and write their contribution to the likelihood like this. So what you'll see here is that we're going to go over all the exact complete losses. And here we're going to use, or we're going to put together, all the right censored losses. And together, this forms our likelihood function. So this is the function that we're going to maximize over the unknown parameters used in our distributional model that we want to investigate, that we want to fit to the available loss data. Okay. Now, um, that's what we want to say about uh, right censoring. So what about left truncation? So what about left truncation? So if the random variable now, uh, y, the loss, is less than a threshold, say t for instance, uh, the deductible typically, or the own risk, then this random variable is going to be missing in our sample. So this one is going to be not observed, it's going to be missing. So the way to reflect this in your likelihood is to use conditional density. So instead of working with the density of y, we're going to work with the density of y, given that y is larger than the threshold t, because we only observe those losses that are going to go above this threshold t. So this is the density of y, evaluated in y, divided by the probability that y must be larger than t. And of course, we're only going to evaluate this conditional density in uh, values of y that are above t. So in order to reflect for the possible presence of um, left truncation, you're going to switch to a conditional likelihood uh, as, as denoted here at the bottom of, of the screen. So putting that all together, if you're fitting a parametric distribution to losses, or to loss data that are potentially right censored and left truncated, you're going to work with a likelihood which is composed as follows. So for the exact losses, for the complete losses, you're going to work with the density of y, but conditional on the fact that y is above a certain threshold t. This threshold can be specific to the observation that uh, you're dealing with, so that's why I denote it here with ti, so this is an i-specific threshold, right? And here we're going to go over all the observations i that belong to the exact losses, yeah? so the exact or completely observed losses. And then on the other hand, um, we'll also have the observations which are censored, and for them we're going to use in our likelihood the following likelihood contribution, which is um, capturing the fact that we don't see the complete loss, and we only know that the loss is larger than the value ci, and instead of using the survival function of y, we're going to use the survival function of y, conditional on the fact that y is above ti, the threshold, the deductible, the own risk. Because if that condition would not be fulfilled, we would not observe the loss in our, uh, in our sample. So this is for the right censored losses. Taking into account that our loss data are left truncated. Uh, so what we're actually using here is the probability that y is larger than ci, given that y is larger than the threshold ti. So that's the likelihood function we want to use. If um, our loss data are subject to right censoring on the one hand and left truncation on the other hand.